Hey everyone, a friend recently sold me this SE Isula for a really good price, but it has a little bit of rust on the laser engraving, you can see it here or here, and the edge is rusty as well, and of course very, very damaged. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera here, but the whole tip is flat, basically flat, I can, I can see light reflecting for about a couple inches here and we've got a lot of slight nicks and burrs uh, on the base of the edge here. So completely flat here, very damaged there and some rust on the surface. Uh, we're going to see if we can clean that up using a Tormec because I intend to completely reprofile this edge. Although the Isula edge is quite good out of the box, uh, I'm not satisfied with this one. I think it got sharpened a little bit too much and the angle was uh, changed. So although the geometry of the blade is very good, uh, I intend to redo the edge completely. And we are going to do that with a Tormek T8 uh, guided angle sharpener. This is my Tormek T8. And the secret to reprofiling an, a knife on this machine for a reasonable price to me is this wheel. This abrasive wheel is the best one I could find for under 150 euros. Uh, as you know, I live in France, so I do things in euros. And this one was um, about 125 euros, which for France, for Europe, but for France especially, is a very good price for an 80 grit uh, wheel. This wheel is 80 grit, which is uh, plenty, plenty good enough for reprofiling this kind of uh, quite soft uh, carbon steel. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Isula is made of 1095 carbon steel. And this wheel, 80 grit, is going to do the job perfectly. The brand is Dictum. I don't know how you would pronounce that. Maybe Dictum or Dictum. Uh, D-I-C-T-U-M. I'm not sponsored by them. I bought this with my own money, but I fully endorse it. It's really good. Uh, it, doesn't even, um, it doesn't even wear away too fast. It's uh, actually a very good wheel. I like it. I like it a lot. 80 grit, perfect for reprofiling. The uh, base Tormek wheel that comes with the machine uh, does not do the job for uh, complete reprofilings. Uh, it's too slow. It's basically too slow. It wears away a bit too fast. Not because the wheel isn't good, just because the you need to work very long uh, for a very long time to reprofile, and um, and it, it just uh, wears away the stone. So this one doesn't wear away too much. It's water stone, very simple, and much much cheaper than CBN or diamond wheels. Uh, especially the higher grit ones. Uh, here in France, a CBN or diamond wheel for the Tormek um, in uh, 400 or less grit uh, will, uh, will be about 350, maybe, maybe more, maybe 400 euros uh, in 2023. So it's completely unimaginable for me to buy uh, a diamond wheel for 400 euros and then have uh, running costs of adding uh, additives to the water to prevent the rust. Uh, I much prefer this wheel and uh, 80 grit Plenty, plenty enough. Very good wheel. Dictum, 100 and maybe 30, 125 euros. Let's go. Okay, so we are going to prep our blade. Of course, the second you start filming, everything starts uh, falling off. So, we are going to start prepping our blade. For that, we are going to need, of course, the knife jig for the Tormek. We are going to need some masking tape to protect the blade, especially this blade given it's uh, coated, so we wouldn't want to scratch the coating too much. And there's a, um, there's a, a factor that comes in play here, which is that the, um, this uh, specific model, it's a full flat grind. Given that it's a full flat grind, you are not going to get a um, homogeneous thickness uh, on the back of the blade here, which means that you risk, when clamping it in the jig, you risk it uh, not being the um, same angle from top to bottom, if you see, if you if you know what I mean. So it could uh, shift, it could migrate, and you you could get an uneven grind uh, on one side compared to the other. So the masking tape is going to create so, um, a bit of a forgiving surface, uh, something a bit uh, a bit softer, a bit squishier, that is going to allow the clamp to to squeeze the blade a bit more homogeneously. Uh, given the size of the clamp and the size of the blade here, I am going to make use of the grind line here. Uh, given that the blade is uh, the, the the knife is uh, full thickness at the grind line, I am going to clamp a slight, uh, small bit of the of the clamp here on the grind line, which is uh, going to help me maintain 
uh, a good uh, orientation here. You could add one more strip, uh, but I don't find it particularly necessary. Uh, one strip is enough, it's easier to tear off once you're done. I prefer one strip. Let's clamp it. Once again, I'm using the base of the blade here with the grind line uh, and the full thickness of the steel to kind of align the blade in the clamp. I'm not going to go into details on the angle of clamping. Do you want the blade like that? Do you want it like this? Uh, do you want to follow from the, the base, the ricasso, to the tip uh, with the, the, the edge of the clamp? Uh, just go simple. If, you begin, if you're a beginner especially, just go very simple. You can go parallel to the, to the edge, uh, very simply, you go parallel to the edge and you try and align this uh, corner of the clamp with the, uh, the tip. So try not to do something like that, try to clamp it on uh, the whole length of the clip and do not go too deep like this. Uh, this is uh, going to cause problems, you might even start grinding the clamp itself. So just clamp at the edge of the steel here, not too bad, not too bad. And we're good. Okay, so it's clamped, it's secure. Let's go to the machine and start grinding. Uh, I marked the edge with uh, a Sharpie. Um, I'm not going to make use of the angle uh, calculation card because I'm not looking for a specific angle. I'm just looking to reduce the angle a little bit. So I don't need a card. I'm not looking for like 18 degrees or 17.5 degrees. I'm just looking to thin this out a little bit. So I'm just going to find the angle that the edge is actually at right now, and then diminish it just a slight bit. Okay, so this is too much. Let's raise the, the bar a little bit. We have more or less found our angle. Uh, I'm going to reduce it just a little bit and start grinding. Excellent. So as you can see, the marker is gone on the whole uh, width of the secondary, secondary bevel, so we can start grinding now. Yep. You won't be able to see it, but there is a little bit of remaining uh, ink on the very apex of the blade, which is normal given that I intended to reduce the angle. Uh, so we are going to remove that, keep going until it's gone, and until we generate a burr on the other side. I wouldn't normally go for a burr immediately uh, on the first uh, few passes, uh, but given that this is a reprofiling, I'm not um, as worried about that as I would be if I was just honing an edge. The grain of this wheel is supposed to be 80 grits, it's quite uh, aggressive. And you can definitely hear the difference between this and the stock wheel that comes with the Tomek. This wheel is much more aggressive. You can also feel it work much more. Uh, you can feel that it, uh, it rips a lot more metal, which is what I'm looking for here. We almost have a burr on the entire width of the blade, on the entire length of the edge, I should say. Uh, there's a very slight section here with no burr, which is um, kind of to be expected given that the, the the ricasso and the sharpening choil tend to get in the way when it comes to getting the, the very start of the edge here. So I'm going to keep going just a little bit and then I'm going to switch sides and even things out a little bit. I can now feel that we have a burr on the entire length of the edge. I'm going to switch sides, even things out. Please forgive the awkward uh, grinding uh, position here. It's actually hard doing this with the tripod and the camera just there, so. Now that we have our burr on the entire edge, both sides, and that the angle is uh, more or less the same, uh, we need to remove the burr. That's where this wheel uh, comes into play actually, because 
This wheel generates a burr that is removable with one single stropping step, believe it or not. You could remove it using the leather side of the Tormek here, but it would take some time. It does work. It does work. I would need to spend maybe three, four minutes on that and it would remove the burr. Trust me, I've done it before with the stock uh, Tormek paste. Uh, this 80 grit burr can also be removed using power stropping methods with uh, high speed felt wheels, for instance. Uh, that's what I'm going to use because it's faster and I like fast and efficient. So I'm going to take you to the power buffer and we are going to remove this uh, annoying burr. This is a felt wheel and I'm using ultra fine stropping compound. This is not, um, how would you say, it's not greasy or waxy compound. It's actually compressed dust. So it doesn't load up the wheel. This has advantages. It has uh, disadvantages too. But in this case, uh, it's uh, quite good because it doesn't, um, it doesn't glass the surface of the wheel and it allows it to um, kind of uh, micro, um, it allows it to micro convex the edge, uh, which is what I'm looking for here. I want to be slightly more aggressive than I would be with a hand stropping, for instance, uh, because I want to remove this quite prominent burr. So in this case, uh, a very soft and unloaded uh, felt wheel is what I'm looking for. Let's go. This is what we get after power stropping. So of course it's not a mirror polished edge, uh, it won't reflect anything, uh, but this is not what we are looking for. What we are looking for is a reprofiled edge and a refined edge with only two steps. Let's test the edge, see what kind of results we get. Normal printer paper. So not too bad, not too bad at all. I'm going to clean up uh, the stropping residue on the blade and show you, try to show you close up what the edge looks like. Yep. We do have really good cutting performance. Oh, and the paper is um, actually slightly wet too, because we're uh, in winter here. So, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Let's try and get a close-up of the edge. Yep. Really not too bad. Not too bad at all. Can it shave? Let's see if it shaves. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it does shave very cleanly, effortless, excellent. So, we got uh, an absolute shaving sharp edge uh, with only two steps. 80 grit uh, dictum brand wheel and a power stropping step with a felt wheel and some ultra fine non-loading non-waxy compound. Tell me what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a nice one guys.